What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I want to talk about how to make music faster. For those of you wondering why you would even want that, stick around to the end and I'll address that at the end of this video, but I'm assuming if you clicked on it, you're at least somewhat interested uh, in making music faster, so I want to get right into the how-to first. There are three overarching ways to make your music faster that I want to go into in this video. They've really helped me speed up my workflow, get more done, and just make more music, and honestly have more fun doing it. And those are come up with musical ideas more often, learn your tools inside and out, and have processes to fall back on. So let's get deeper into those, starting with the first one, come up with musical ideas more often. And this isn't assuming that inspiration will just hit you out of nowhere. This is intentionally taking the time to have sessions and have more frequent sessions that are dedicated to idea generation. You sit down with your primary music production platform, whether that be your DAW of choice or some hardware, and just make a bunch of ideas. Choose some sounds, design some sounds even, and just go. And once you've got an idea in a decent spot, go, okay, I'm gonna leave that aside for now, move on to another one. Do the same thing until you've got a few ideas sitting around and try to make a habit of doing this. I've done this multiple times on camera. I even did a 30 day challenge where I would take at least 15 minutes every single day to make a short musical snippet. And that ended up giving me like an album's worth of musical ideas that I could then flesh out and turn into full songs. Not every idea was all that good, but that's kind of the point. By making more musical ideas, you increase the likelihood that you're gonna have a lot more good ideas. And I've done this on camera many times, making just beats as fast as possible, not worrying too much about how they would be fleshed out later, just go, 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 and then coming back later and picking out the best ones. Not only does this give you a higher likelihood of having a lot of good song-worthy ideas, but it also means that you can start combining ideas. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to make music faster. It almost feels like cheating. So for a concrete example of a way that I will do this, often I will use a device like the Novation Circuit, which has a bunch of different slots for like project files, essentially. I'll just make a bunch of beats and eventually I'll probably notice that a couple of these separate little musical passages could be combined. Either I'll have a melody that could work for a breakdown and then a melody that could work for a drop like this. Or even more frequently, I'll have two seemingly entirely separate song ideas that I notice could be made to transition into each other. So the song ends up divided into kind of two halves. It starts off with one central idea, kind of works that idea all the way to its conclusion, and then seamlessly transitions into another idea, and often I'll modify those projects to be more similar than they originally were. I have done this a lot. Once again, it feels like cheating, like a full song came together way too easily, but it just means that you spent the time and effort in different places. You already spent the time and effort coming up with the ideas, and so now you're just combining them. It also has the added benefit of making a song a little more interesting to the listener, because rather than follow a standard structure, it takes you on a bit of a journey. DJs might be a little less likely to play a song if it has major tempo changes, so keep that in mind. But if you're just trying to make something interesting, I would say have at it. So here are a couple of examples of times that I just straight up combined two separate song ideas to make one song.
So those examples are fairly extreme and also fairly rough in their execution. That's because I made them entirely self-contained within one relatively inexpensive device. But obviously you could take this a whole lot farther. I'll do things like render out individual tracks from a project and bring them into another project in my DAW. And you can get a very polished song with this method. And I definitely don't have to be as extremely different as the examples that I just played, but hopefully they drive the point home. But let's move on to the second way to make sure that you make music faster, which is learn your tools inside and out, and especially pay attention to uh, learning the interface of your tools, whether they be hardware or software, and learning shortcuts. This is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but if you're using your DAW, I want you to start thinking about how you can use your mouse as little as possible. So things like creating tracks, duplicating stuff, moving stuff around, all that should be able to be done with keyboard shortcuts, and you should take the time to learn those and build in that muscle memory so that you can execute commands without even having to think about it. So same goes for your hardware. Learn where the buttons are, learn what the shortcuts are. For stuff like the Roland MC-101, this is especially important because those aren't necessarily obvious, but once you know them, it can dramatically speed up your workflow. I did an entire video talking about uh, workflow hacks like that. I'll link that at the end of this video. And for hardware devices in general, the better that you know the interface, the faster you'll be able to work with it. So take the extra time up front to really learn the interface inside and out even if you have to watch a bunch of YouTube videos and RTFM to get there. It will absolutely pay off later. Also, when you are in music making sessions, I want you to start noticing times that you do the same task over and over, or maybe you have a process that takes a little while, and I want you to start thinking, how can I automate this or drastically speed it up? And once you start noticing that, you can start doing something about it. You can do things like uh, make a DAW template. You can do stuff like have all your samples or presets that you typically reach for in one place. Or you could set up certain routing or certain processing in advance. That kind of goes into the templates thing. Or even change keyboard shortcuts, kind of remap them depending on what you want to do. And finally, on this topic, kind of adjacent to it, really, this is a tip I am blatantly stealing from Ali Abdal's video about how to type faster, which is to use more force. And what I found is this kind of creates a sense of urgency, especially on hardware. If you're applying a little more pressure, a little more force, moving a little more aggressively, that will make you make music a little bit faster. And if something kind of breaks that flow, you'll be more likely to notice it and be able to correct it. And finally, for the third way to make music faster, have processes to fall back on. These are things that can get you unstuck if you ever find yourself in a bit of a creative rut or some technical frustration. For instance, if you're feeling absolutely creatively drained or in kind of a songwriting rut, use a predetermined songwriting method to at least come up with something. I did an entire video on that that I'll link at the end of this video with a bunch of suggestions for ways to come up with song ideas. And it's worth having at least a few of those in your back pocket to return to if you're finding yourself stuck, but you need to come up with something. If you're trying to turn a small idea into something that can be part of a larger song, have some ways that you can fall back on to create some variations. So things like uh, make something go into halftime or double time, adjusting filters, having little melodic switch ups or different chords under the same melody, and a bunch of the this other kind of stuff. And for that matter, have a process for finishing a song. You'd be surprised at how much you can systematize taking a small idea and arranging it out into a full track, especially in more EDM type songs. I did an entire video on my kind of checklist approach to finishing songs, especially if I'm stuck. And you can kind of just follow this and end up with a finished song at the very end. It's almost like an algorithm. So I would highly recommend checking that out. I'll link that at the end of this video as well. And what if you get stuck during mixing and mastering? Maybe you're having problems getting your song to sound the way that you want. You're having some technical issues. It's not translating well in different systems or something just doesn't feel right and you can't put your finger on it. This should have a process behind it as well. And I wanna call this a uh, Band-Aid off mixing and mastering because it's really easy to just sit there and tweak something 
endlessly and get really fixated on fixing something and be really reluctant to move on. And so what I suggest is just ripping off the band-aid and doing some kind of difficult, sometimes even ego-destroying steps, but they'll get you to where you want to be a lot faster. So first of all, reference it against another song and don't compare them, but do use the other song as kind of a reality check for, okay, this is where the low end is sitting. Uh, this is how much sub bass they have. This is like how high certain elements are mixed, all that kind of stuff. Critical listening to another song will pretty much immediately tell you why your song is falling short. And also reference your song on other systems. So if you've been just mixing on headphones for a long time, put the song on in a car stereo, maybe a crappy set of speakers, a different set of headphones or earbuds, anything to give you a different reference point. And that'll pretty quickly expose issues with your mix that you can then go and fix and just cycle through these quickly. Don't dwell on it too long. Just switch to a different system, go, oh, I definitely need to change that, change it, move on. And once you've gone through this process and the song is decently in the ballpark of your reference track and doesn't have anything that really sticks out on any sound systems, call it done, move on. Don't fixate on these little details. You'll always have opportunities to make more music and continually refine your process for professionalism down the road. Definitely take the time to make something excellent and pay attention to detail, but learn when you're gonna hit a point of diminishing returns and call it once you hit that point. And finally, let's talk about why you would even want to try to make music faster. After all, a lot of us do this as a hobby and all of us do this as a creative outlet. And so it can be tempting to say, well, you should just take your time with it. And I do agree with that to a degree. I definitely have lots of sessions where I just kind of mess around with stuff and try to find something that's cool and eventually stumble onto something. And there's a lot of creativity flying around and that's great. And in fact, I want to make more time for that. And that's why I advocate making music quickly. A lot of us are busy. Most of us are doing this as a side hustle, including myself. And so being able to finish songs quickly to move on to making more songs will be important. The more that I can finish songs quickly and the more that I can come up with new ideas quickly, the better I'm using my time and often the more fun I'll be having. Getting stuck on one song, just spinning your wheels is not fun. And I want to minimize that as much as possible and be feeling creative often. And falling back on processes can often lead to inspiration even if you weren't feeling inspired at the very beginning and making stuff quickly can often get you into a bit of a flow state. So. This is why I think it's important. And plus, for me personally, I kind of want to be like prolific. And uh, this is a good way to accomplish that goal. Not everyone's going to have that goal, but if you want to spend more time on each individual song, intentionally moving quickly will still help you avoid fixating on one specific little thing and instead focus on making the entire thing good. And that is my advice for how and why to make music faster. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any tips of your own, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to see some related videos on coming up with song ideas, my 30 day beat making challenge, finishing songs, or the Roland MC 101 shortcuts, you can click or tap the links on the screen. Once again, thank you so much for watching.